Hey, what is up, guys? I've been working on an anti-cheat called Unity Anti-Cheat, or UAC for short. Uh, but this anti-cheat doesn't actually require any command blocks or uh, ticking areas, nothing like that. All you need to do is import a behavior pack and you're good. As soon as we join, uh, after a few seconds, we're going to be met with this little screen right here. Uh, now, we also the first thing we also notice is the message above our heart bar, where it's going to say the kills, deaths, and current kill streak. Uh, there is nothing being displayed there at the current moment because we don't actually have a score for anything. But let's say if we were to die over time, we now are displaying that we have one death. So, what this anti cheat is actually doing, uh, without actually anything having turned on at the moment, is it's keeping everyone out of a creative mode if they are not staff. So if I were to go into creative mode, uh, since I am not staff, it'll actually immediately kill me. And then you're going to see a message saying, Nightwalker lots changing game mode is, is it not allowed. Uh, so the question is, how does one who actually is authorized to go into uh, creative uh, do so. As you can see at the, at the top of the screen, it said uh, do, to do the function help command. So if we actually perform that command, uh, we will be made by this message right here. So it says this, you must be staffed to do this command and the tag for staff is staff status. So if we go ahead and actually give ourselves that tag, uh, and then perform the help command again, we'll be meted with this small UI right here in chat. Uh, so you see that we have the stats command, and below it, it says uh, it shows the player's time played, uh, warns, and current game mode. Uh, we have warns where you can manually warn a player, uh, but there's also automated ways to warn players, and we can get to that later. Uh, then there is a clear lag option where you can manually clear uh, entities and we have a clear area where you can clear uh, areas. It says this message right here basically saying, hey, this can't be undone, you know. Uh, and then if we go and do it again, it actually uh, goes ahead and clears the area. And this is very useful for clearing out, you know, illegal stashes and what have you. So. Right off the bat, this is kind of the basic functionality that we have in here. Uh, we also have God mode and the ability to toggle. And what it means by toggle is that we can then toggle certain things within UAC. So if we do UAC slash uh, module check, this is actually going to show us what is on and what is off at the current moment within UAC. But as you can see further, we have item commands, uh, auto clear, and a bunch of other good stuff. Uh, so let me show you guys the stats command. So if I do the stats command, as you can see, it shows us a lot of debug stats about us. Uh, you see that armor stand over there, its name is yeet uh, function, and then the stats command. And then now I can see Yeet's stats, and he currently doesn't have a game mode because he is an entity, so he, it's not going to give me his game mode. Uh, and then we have the second thing, which is time played in ticks, which I'll get to that in a second. We also can see a player's warns, how many times they've spawned an illegal item, and the current KD stats, as well as if they are uh, staff or not, which Yeet is not staff, so it jumps up as false. Now, it's not actually giving us a value for time played because we haven't actually enabled the time played uh, module. And we can do that with the toggle command. So if we toggled uh, time played on, uh, it is now keeping time of the time played. So if we check our stats now, it says our time played in ticks is uh, 264. And we've played for over an hour, which is not accurate. Uh, it's not going to be accurate for the first, you know, hour or so where it says, oh, for an over an hour or less than an hour, uh, it, time, it sometimes gets messed up. But uh, when it comes to like the later regions for like, oh, he's played for three plus hours or four plus hours, it's uh, it, it does get uh, accurate uh, when it comes to that.
Now, the great thing about this is uh, it does stop a number of exploits that cannot be fixed with the slash clear command. Uh, I don't actually have uh, any clients that I can test this on where I can give myself like a, f a fire tile or, uh, or anything like that. Uh, but what I can do is go ahead and get myself a beehive which is usually commonly used in the CBE exploit or the command block exploit. So it's only going to start clearing items from me when unobtainable items are on. So if we do function toggle and then unobtainable items and toggle it on, it is now on. So we're going to go ahead and revoke our staff status. And when we have it in our hand, it's actually going to kick us. Uh, and then send a message saying, hey, Nightwalk Lots was kicked for uh, illegal items. Now, we're not actually going to get kicked from this world because it's a local world. But if it was a realm, I would have just gotten kicked. And I, I would be able to join back immediately after. Right? But now here's the thing. If we go ahead and do our stats a second time, well, we have to be staff first. But if we do our stats a second time, as you can see now, it says that we have spawned in one illegal item. So if I were to give myself uh, two more, I would then get a message saying I have one out of three warns. And if I were to go ahead and check my stats, uh, I now have one warning. Uh, and you can see this every time you uh, check stats on a player. So with module check, I can see what's on, what's on, what's not. And as you can see, the unobtainable items is on. What we can also do with this is the anti-CBE as well. Uh, so if I were to go ahead and toggle that on. There we go. So let's say a player is so fast that... Uh, they were actually able to place the beehive or bee nest or what have you, right? Now, if we go ahead and remove staff, uh, it is gone. So basically, it's going to clear already placed uh, beehives and bee nests around the player. Uh, so there's other cool stuff within uh, UAC as well, but this is basically the gist of it. Now, here's my favorite thing in the whole wide world about... Uh, this this anti cheat and that is the lag clear function. Uh, so if you are staff, you can actually go into creative mode, and here's what it looks like. Uh, now that I'm in creative mode, uh, and you'll notice that we have total entities, and we also have current world spawn. It's not actually displaying anything yet, but what's happening is that it's trying to pull information from the lag clear system and then also the randomizer system. Uh, so if we go ahead and then toggle the actual uh, function for lag clear, uh, it's going to actually start showing us the current entities uh, that are actually on right now. And the threshold for a lag clear is usually around 100. As you can see, it's the entity count is starting to go up gradually. And it's going to update every five seconds or so. So once it goes past 100, it's actually going to go ahead and do an automatic lag clear. And it'll actually uh, tell us in chat as well. So it's not actually going off a timer uh, that usually a lot of realms do every six sec or six uh, minutes or around that time. It's actually going off the entity count. Whereas uh, if the entity count goes past 100, it will immediately do a lag clear. Uh, on the other side, we also have the current world spawn. And it's not going to actually go off of the actual current world spawn. Uh, let's say if I were to set spot world spawn somewhere, it's not going to keep track of that. What's keeping track of is the actual uh, randomized spawn. So if I go ahead and toggle random spawn point, uh, toggle that on. Uh, we're going to start fe uh, getting fed cords. And those coordinates are actually the current world spawn uh, that the randomizer has set it to. 
Now this is pretty good for factions and SMPs, anarchies, uh, what have you. And the main purpose of the spawn randomizer is to stop spawn trapping. Uh, so it's going to randomize the world spawn every five seconds or so. Um, now let's say if a player places a bed down and sets their spawn that way, uh, of course they're not going to spawn there, they want to spawn at their bed. But those coordinates are actually a live feed to the current world spawn, and it's going to constantly change to, ra uh, to random chords. So another thing that UAC also has uh, some built in is uh, the item commands. So there are a few types of them. So you have home, you have set spawn, uh, you have stats, and then you have spawn. So stats is pretty cool because if you enable item commands, what their other players are able to do is without being staffed, they can go ahead and drop an item and then have the, uh, their stats be shown. So if we go ahead and give ourselves a staff real quick, we can toggle item commands on. And we're not going to necessarily need that. So if we go ahead and drop the stats, they can see uh, some basic stats, uh, not all of them that which staff can see, but you know some pretty interesting stats that they might be interested in, which is their time played uh, in words, uh, their current you know infractions and their K the KDRs and stuff. Uh, now we also have uh, set spawn, which if we drop this, we'll obviously go ahead and set our spawn. And we get a local message saying spawn has been set for Nightwalker lots. And only you can see that. Now we also have a another command, which is spawn. So if we drop this, it's actually going to set us closer to world spawn. Let's say you're based quite far out and you just want a command that gets you close to spawn, but you don't really want to get bombarded as soon as you get there. Uh, that command is going to, you know, teleport you relatively close to spawn. Uh, so that way you can get there. And then the last command is going to be super help helpful, which is home, uh, which is going to take you home when you drop it. So when we drop it, we get a message saying going to Nightwalker Lots' spawn point in 30 seconds. Uh, we also get a nifty little progress bar uh, where our message used to be. I notice that we actually have items in our inventory. Uh, so as soon as we come back here, our you know, our message comes back up uh, with the way it originally was. And we actually still have our items here. If we go ahead and give our barrel real quick so we can store some stuff. Uh, now that we actually are here, if we go ahead and die afterwards, we actually still lose our stuff. So it's only going to work if, uh, you know, the home command is being used. Now the best way to keep updated uh, with UAC is obviously to be in the UAC Discord. And it does help to also be in Unity's main Discord. You'll also be able to go ahead and report bugs in UAC, uh, give suggestions, uh, reach out to us. Discord is probably the fastest way to reach out to us. Uh, it's going to be available in the MCP EDL uh, for a very, a very easy going uh, download link. But if you want the current version the fastest being in our discord would be probably be the way to go now i know i didn't actually cover everything within the anti-cheat but that i'll let you guys go ahead and play around with it but other than that that's probably going to wrap it up for this video i'm sorry that i held on for this uh or to this uac uh in the dark for quite some time uh, i wanted to have time to perfect it and make sure that it was 100% usable as well as very user friendly for those that just want to have it plug and play. Go ahead and spread this around to your other realm owners and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. I don't wanna go back. Either you can come and save me or just let my heart collapse. Either you can come and clean me or let me fall into relapse. Either you can come and save me or just stab me in the back. I don't want it to go back. I don't want it to go back. Yeah.